Good morning to our Sunday School families and friends all over the world. We are streaming live on Facebook from the First United Methodist Church here in friendly downtown Morris. We thank you for sharing your time with us this morning. This has been our tradition that we always do a shout out or a sing out to our Sunday School kiddos. Last week, I was brave enough to do a sing out, and I guess we'll give it a shot again today. Allie, Willa, Zephy, Zaley, Luli, Owen, Gabe, Harper, Mitchell, Connor, Jackson, Dalton, Rylan, Brock, Elena, Delaney, Xander, Lila, and Zoe. How is everybody this morning? I hope you're enjoying some breakfast, maybe donuts, maybe powdered sugar donuts that are kind of going all over. I don't know. Today is December number 13, the third Sunday in Advent. Remember, Advent is a time of waiting and preparing, but for what? You're right. It's the birth of Jesus. We wait and prepare with joy. Joy is our faith word this whole month. It's right up here, J-O-Y, a feeling of gratitude and happiness. Last week, we talked about Mary, mother of Jesus, who with joy prepared for his birth. Remember how the angel Gabriel came to Mary? He just appeared to her, and he said that she was chosen by God to be the mother of God's son, Jesus. The angel told her that absolutely nothing is impossible for God. Even though Mary was really afraid, she said, I am the Lord's servant. In me, may your word be fulfilled. And she sang that beautiful song, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. Last week, we talked also about how God chooses ordinary people for extraordinary purposes. And today we're going to talk about Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus. Remember, he was our mystery guest last week. He was in the puppet theater, which we don't have up today. He was chosen by God, and an angel came to him while he was dreaming and sleeping. And the angel told him to take Mary as his wife and to name the baby she carried Jesus. And children, that is what Joseph did. But two things we need to do before we give you the hints about our mystery guest. So the first one is we need to light our third Advent candle in our wreath. And it's, it's really right behind me here. So before we do that, though, find the Advent candle wreath that you made a few weeks ago. And we are moving along in Advent. So the first week, we lit the candle of, let's find it, right over here, hope. And you can see we have the flame up, and I bet you do it at home, too. And then last week, we lit the candle of peace, and today we are lighting the candle of joy. So three candles burning today, and you should have your three flames up on yours at home. So Mr. Paul, while I read the Bible verses, will you light the candles? And today you'll see that he's lighting the pink one too. So our verse is from the book of Psalms, and it's all about joy. And so I want you to listen for that word joy while I read this. 
But let us all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing with joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Good job, kiddos. Thank you, Mr. Paul. So now in our third week of Advent, we're thinking about God's hope, peace, and joy. Those are all gifts from God. Now the second thing we need to do is to open window number 13 on our Advent calendar. Wow, I can't believe it. We are halfway to Christmas. That's the question I was going to ask you. What are, we, what are we waiting for? Christmas. And what number would Christmas Day be? 25. So I was pretty excited. At home this morning, I opened this one up. And number 13 is the biggest one yet. And I think it is making the stable. So I can't wait to do the next ones. So I, I think you probably have this out someplace in your home so everybody can see it. So, kiddos, we're just about ready. This is part of our favorite time of our lesson all morning. I'm going to give you the hints, and you are so, I wrote that down in my notes, S, oh, 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 so good at this. Okay, hint number one. This person traveled to see her cousin Elizabeth, who was pregnant and expecting her child, who would be named John, and he would later be called John the Baptist. Ryland, Jackson, Connor, Dalton, does that make you think about anyone? Second hint, she was a poor peasant girl who was visited by the angel Gabriel and told very exciting news. Luli and Owen, Gabe, Harper, Mitchell, do you have it now? Okay, third hint, she is married to Joseph and is the mother of Jesus. Zaley, Brock, Zephy, Willa. I imagine that hint gave you the answer. Delaney, Ellie, Zoe, Xander, Lila, Elena. You're all right. It is Mary, the mother of Jesus. We are so honored to have you visit today, Mary. Well, good morning, boys and girls, and I'm very happy to be here today. It has been a very long journey to get here. Um, I had to walk. Oh my goodness. That's, well, that's how we traveled from wow. one town to another. I only rode the donkey when I was traveling with Joseph to Bethlehem before Jesus was born. Oh, Mary, we have so many questions to ask you. We just don't know where to start. Okay, what was it like to be visited by the angel Gabriel? Well, as you can imagine, I was a little afraid and definitely confused. I was engaged to Joseph, but we were not married yet. I was very young, and my family was very poor. Mm -hmm. I thought, why would an angel from God be visiting me? And then the angel actually talked to me and said, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and we'll be called the Son of the Most High. Oh my goodness, Mary, you were chosen by God. Everyone knows your name and how you are an important part of God's story for us all. I think on the altar up there at our church is a figurine of you by the stable where Jesus was born. Do you want to go look at it and show the kiddos? Sure, I'd love to show the kids. I'm assuming that a lot of them have a nativity set at home as well. So let's see here if I can find myself. So here I am, and this is my husband Joseph, and there is baby Jesus. And there's a lot of other things up here this morning too. So way over here, 
Those would be the three wise men, or the magi, as, we, as we've been talking about. And who else is up here? We've got a shepherd, and of course the animals. We've got a donkey, and there looks to be like a cow there, and a couple of camels. So that's pretty exciting. All the people are represented on that very special day. Oh my goodness, Mary, we could go on talking more, but it's time for our story mat. Each week, we put pictures of people on it who are a part of our lesson. In fact, last week, I put a picture of you, Mary, in the stable. I told the kiddos that the stable was more of a cave instead of how they imagined it as a barn. Today, we're putting a picture of Joseph, your husband. Our Bible story today is about Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus. And while I get ready here, let's put Joseph right here. I love this picture because you can tell that they're looking outside and there is the star. Okay, so um, would you like to help me read the story for the kiddos? Sure would, I would love to help. So let me begin. Today I am reading from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 24, and we're going to paraphrase this a little bit, you know, kind of shorten it up. So this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Mary gave birth to a son, and they named him Jesus. It is miraculous that an angel appeared to me, and then also to my husband Joseph, in his dream. I am so thankful that Joseph listened to the angel and followed God's command. God chose both Joseph and I, just common people. We weren't rich, we weren't kings or queens or rulers. We were just hardworking, ordinary people. I think you said before that God uses ordinary people for extraordinary purposes? Yep. What joy to be used by God. Boys and girls, let's watch our DVD right now and see what Abigail has to tell us about Joseph's joy. Hey everyone, it's Abigail. This week we're talking about Joseph. by God. Joseph already knew that Mary was going to have a baby, but he was wondering what his role was. He was sleeping and an angel came to him in a dream to tell him about Mary and the new baby that would be born. The angel told Joseph not to be afraid, to stay with Mary and raise the baby together. The angel also told him that they would call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This was a reminder to Joseph that God was with him and that it was going to be okay. While Joseph was wondering, God heard him. God responds to us and helps us when we don't know what to do. When we are in tough situations, God hears us and wants us to know that we are not alone. For Joseph, it was an angel coming in his dream to calm him and tell him about Jesus. Maybe for you, God shows up through a friend or a family member who encourages you and helps you. Maybe it's simply a feeling that everything is going to be okay. God showed up through my friends when I auditioned for a school play. 
I got a part, but not the one that I wanted. I felt a little discouraged and uncertain if I would be good at the part I got. But my friends had been in plays before, and they talked to me about how to be a good actor in any role. With their support, I felt more confident and my performance was a success. That was God helping me through my friends. Joseph also found himself in an unexpected role as Jesus' father. Being a father to an unexpected child probably made Joseph feel uncertain. But the angel came to assure him that his role was a good thing and that he shouldn't be afraid of it. This is also true for us. God is with us and is helping us along the way, even when we don't understand. Joy doesn't always look like a big and happy celebration. But for Joseph, joy was gratitude and acceptance of the next step in his journey. I have joy knowing that God hears us and that God is always with us. Now it's your turn to wonder. Boys and girls, Abigail reminded us that joy is happiness and a feeling of gratitude. Joseph certainly felt gratitude when the angel told him what God wanted him to do. Before the angel spoke to him in his dream, Joseph was feeling very worried and unsure. Mary, what do you think? Well, I have learned that God never leaves us. He assures us that it will be okay when we are filled with the doubt and uncertainty. For me, an angel spoke God's message. Then I wasn't so worried. I was filled with joy, with gratitude. But for many people, God speaks to them through friends or family. God works through other people. We can talk some more now, but let's toss that wonder cube. Whoa. <laughs> Wondering is a good thing. It is thinking out loud. Okay, definitely. Mary, will you read the question after I give the cube the famous twirl? Absolutely, twirl away. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, good twirl. Okay, so the question is, what are some of the names for Jesus? I think I heard some of them when we read the Bible story today. You're right, Mary. We heard the names Messiah and Emmanuel. Messiah means the anointed one or the chosen one. Jesus is the Messiah. And Emmanuel means God with us. Jesus is God's son and he was here on earth and then died on the cross for our sins. And he is now in heaven with God. But the Holy Spirit is here with us, in fact, right now. I have heard um, many people use many different names for Jesus. Of course, he's my son, so I can call him my son. But he is called Lord, Prince of Peace, Teacher, Savior, the Mighty One, Lamb of God, and if I can add, friend, because he can be your friend. Uh, so, so many wonderful and so many holy names for Jesus. You are right, Mary. I imagine all of you watching today have lots of ideas of names for Jesus, especially when we pray to him. Lots of times when I start my prayer, I say, Dear Lord Jesus, I always wonder, children, when you start your prayers, how do you address Jesus? What words do you say? Maybe at home today with your family, you can talk about how each of you start your prayers, what special name you have for Jesus. But right now, I'm thinking about this wonder box, and I wonder what's inside today. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Well, I don't know if Paul and the camera can get his, he's going to use all his technology here to see. This is a, this is Joseph. And this is from the nativity that Mr. Paul and I have at home in our dining room. And I've always wondered what Joseph did first when he woke up from his dream. You know the dream when the angel spoke to him? I'm going to think about that today, and maybe you can think about that at home too. Can you imagine? 
I'm going to put this carefully over here. In fact, I think I'm going to set him back in here. I have some soft cloth in there so he doesn't get broken. Before we have our offering today, I want to mention again our celebration chart. And I can't remember, maybe it was last week that I had forgotten this at home. And it was in your Sunday school bag. This is a new one that we started just a few weeks ago. And do you remember last week I was teasing you, saying that you could almost play bingo with this? That if you do one of the things, you can put a cross or X through it. And then you can do all the things going across or all the things going down. Or if you really want to be tricky, you can go this way. Well, some of the things I was going to highlight today, did anyone forgive someone else? Or did you accept a new responsibility? Like um, mom and dad said, OK, now you're old enough that you can put out all the garbage cans and the recycling for the pickup. Or did you feel joy this week? So I think Mary and I, I don't know, Mary, if you would agree that we need to work on a celebration chart, too. Absolutely. I can totally work on that this week. So question, is it time for the kids to get their offering boxes ready? Yes, yes. And this hasn't changed. Our offering goes in here. And remember, you can drop it off at church um, in the mornings when the office is open or when you pick up your Sunday school bags you can bring it then and it goes to our family assistance fund and in our church service earlier today Pastor Laura was talking about that and she was thanking everyone including all of you Sunday school families for all the money that you have given for that she said that in the past few weeks that so many people have needed help with buying food, paying for their rent, buying gas, paying for their electricity, all kinds of things. So we thank you, all of you Sunday School families, for being so generous. Let's get ready for our prayers, Mary. Will you pray with us today? Yes, I would. I would love to. Let me get those. So we always start with the prayer that children, I know you know this by heart, because we have said this at Sunday school for years. Many I years, think, yes. Mary. Okay. Thank, Thank you, God, God, for all you do. We, we dedicate, dedicate our, our gifts, gifts to you. you. Amen. Amen. And now, when we have been practicing the Lord's Prayer, and I believe, I'm sure, children, that you know it by heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Mary. So it is time for our craft. So find your Ziploc bag that has the date December 13 on it. And I need to get out. Mary, can you... Maybe just hold this, and I want to get out a couple of these ornaments. So Mrs. Lori has put together all our crafts, and I especially love the Christmas ones. So you have some things to cut out. Cut out the ornaments, and then you're going to glue them, or I think she stapled them together. And to be tricky, she put a little cotton ball inside so it so it kind of puffs out there. And these are all names that we use for Jesus. 
just like Mary told us so many before. And so on them, I have teacher, savior, messiah, Christ, and there's some more in your bag too. So you can decorate with those in your house. Okay, and then be sure to send um, Mrs. Pam a picture and um, we can put it on the church's website so everybody can see what you all are working on and learning. I can't believe it, Mary. It's time to say goodbye for today. These Our, mornings always go by so quickly. They just fly by. We've had so many things to talk about and learn together. Mr. Paul lit the pink candle, the candle of joy. We learned a lot about Joseph, Mary's husband, and also the names that people have for Jesus. Her mystery guest, Mary, I imagine she would like to say goodbye. I'm going to miss you all. It was great to be here, and thank you for letting me visit. I loved telling you about being chosen by God and to be the mother of Jesus. Also, I'm glad that you learned more about my husband, Joseph, who was visited by an angel in his dreams. Always remember that God uses ordinary people for extraordinary purposes. Bye for now, and have a good week. Oh, thanks, Mary. Bye, children, and don't forget to open up your Advent wreath windows each day. Mm -hmm.